Okay. Hi friends! In this video, I'm making some late Victorian slash Edwardian underwear. Uh, these are the layers that would have been worn against the skin. They would have protected from corset chafing uh, and kind of been the layers to get dirty and sweaty and they would have been washed much more often than the clothes that you wear on top. So the first layer is the chemise, and I'm making a fairly short chemise. Short chemises were a thing. Uh, they weren't as common, I think, as longer kind of knee length. Excuse me. Uh, they weren't as common as knee length chemises, but I have seen some extant garments uh, chemises that are shorter. Uh, although they usually don't have lace at the bottom, mine has lace at the bottom, it's fine. So, for the drawers, I went with a little bit more of an Edwardian style. Uh, I did a kind of flare leg knee length drawer, which is a little bit more of a lingerie style. Uh, in the 1880s and 90s, they still had fairly uh, narrow cut drawers that were a little bit longer. So, the chemise. I drew out this design. Uh, there you go. It's pretty simple. It just has some gathering uh, here along the front neckline. I ended up also doing that on the back neckline. Uh, and it has some lace edging around the neckline and the armholes. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up actually not doing the edging around the armholes because the lace that I was using was a little bit rough and I thought it might be kind of uncomfortable to, to have around the armholes, so I just did the neckline. So I drew out two options. Uh, a short version and a longer version with a ruffle at the bottom. I did the short version. I might do the long version later. We'll see. And then I drew out a pattern based on my bust measurement plus like a couple inches, maybe six inches. Uh, and then it's just kind of a very simple dress pattern with extra room put in the center front and center back uh, for the gathering. So here is the pattern. So I decided to go ahead and just draw this pattern out on my fabric uh, because it was pretty simple uh, and I was pretty confident with it. I thought it would just go straight to fabric. So I just realized that being the extremely short person that I am, I can fit the entire front plus back length on the width of the fabric. I pinned and sewed the side seams with a French seam and to do this I had the garment right side out and I sewed with about a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then I trimmed it down to uh, just under a quarter inch and then I pressed it open and then sewed it with those seam allowances tucked on the inside so how you would normally sew with the right sides together. Uh, and that keeps the bra edges encased and the pressing open helps you to get a really nice clean French seam. To add some lace trimming to the bottom, I folded the edge up and then laid some lace on top and top stitched it down. Then I ran a small running stitch along the neckline by hand to gather it down. I did just the front and back sections and I would later regret this. So then I did a little hem by hand on the armholes. Uh, I turned the fabric about an eighth of an inch by hand and then another eighth of an inch and just did a small hand hem. And then I tried to hem the neckline the same way, which actually worked out okay. I had to kind of move the gathers away from wherever I was working because I had tied them off at the correct length, uh, which was a mistake. But yeah, so I had to move the gathers and sew a little bit and then zhuzh, like move, move the gathers to the other side and, and keep sewing and it was uh, a little bit annoying. So 
yeah, maybe don't do what I did. And as I was doing this, Pumpkin decided it was her job to insert herself into this situation. So I have this vintage lace edging, edging lace that I got. Uh, it's a little wider than I want, so I think I am cutting it and then I'm going to sort of hem it by machine. I think I'll just turn it under once. My cat is back. Uh, do you want to like move maybe? Uh, I think I'm just gonna turn the bottom edge under once and then sew that by machine and then when I put it onto the chemise uh, that will be like between the lace and the chemise so that'll be like not not a raw edge sticking out if that makes sense and then I sewed that by hand with a back stitch Last step for the chemise is to take some beautiful sage green ribbon and weave it through the neckline lace. To the drawers. Here is my little sketch for the drawers. And uh, I did not stick to this sketch very well. I originally drew out my sketch with darts and then I patterned it to have no darts and then I messed up my patterning and then ended up adding darts anyways. For the drawers, I did kind of a circular pattern, uh, a little bit like a circle skirt and then with that crotch curve. Uh, and also these are split drawers, so the crotch curve doesn't get sewn shut. So this time I did draw my pattern out on paper first because this one's a little bit more complicated uh, and I wanted to make sure that I had it right before I just cut it out. So I drew out a pattern and I ended up cutting it with the side seam on fold so each right and left pant leg were cut as one piece. Uh, later I added a side seam you'll see, but I originally cut it as one, and then I trimmed down the uh, waistline on just the front to make it a little bit lower. So I drew out my pattern as not cut on the fold with seam allowance, and then I decided it was too wide, so I folded part of that edge, part of the side seam edge, not side seam yet, uh, Part of that edge I folded under, but I left the seam allowance at the top, so that gave me an extra inch of width in the waistline and then because it's a circle uh, a lot of that is on the bias which means that it stretches so that gave me like another inch uh, and if you've ever made a circle skirt and done just the geometry to cut out a circle as big as your waist and then notice that it was like three or four inches bigger than your waist uh, you would know this I did not think about this so yeah, uh, but it turns out that I got exactly enough extra room there to do uh, four one-inch darts, two on the front and two on the back, so I put those uh, centered between the side and the front and the side and the back, and I just sewed a one-inch wide dart that was about four inches deep. I think the ones in the front I made more like three inches uh, wasn't really very scientific. So then I did the same narrow hem by hand along those crotch curves. And if I had stopped to think at any point during this process, I might have remembered that this edge is supposed to be finished with the facing, not with a hem. But unfortunately, I did not, and it is now finished with a hem.
I also did a similar hem, but by machine, on the bottom edge of my drawers, and this will later be hidden when I add the insertion lace. So then I drew out a flounce for the bottom of my drawers, and a flounce is uh, like a type of ruffle, but it's cut on the curve like a circle skirt. It allows there to be less fabric in the smaller edge, but uh, the same amount of fabric in the outer edge for the amount of floof uh, in your final product. So mine weren't very curved, so it probably didn't make a huge difference, but I did decide to do a flounce. Uh, but I looked at the flounce and I realized that my hem edge for these drawers was really, really long, like way too long. Okay, so I've kind of drawn out a flounce here. That's that's Acorn. Um, she did not help me in this process. So I drew out like a seven inch flounce and I made it slightly more curved here than just the bottom curve of this edge. So I think I should have gone with a narrower, with a narrower leg and then done a similarly sized flounce and then gathered it slightly. Uh, so I'm actually thinking I might yeah, I think I'm going to cut off a good like three inches here, and this is just still a fairly flared leg, like that's not even, it's not like it's not flared, so yeah, I think I'm going to cut this off, uh, sew it, and then do some insertion lace. So I didn't explain this very well, but what I mean is that I wanted to have a flounce, but I also wanted to gather it down into that bottom edge of my drawers. And the bottom edge of my drawers was so long that I would have had to cut a much longer flounce to gather it down the way that they were. So I wanted to make the bottom edge of my drawers narrower so that I could cut a similar sized flounce to what I drew out and I would still be able to gather and it down. And the seam allowance. Not with those scissors. That's better. Then I drew out a slightly more curved flounce and cut it out. Then I took that flounce and laid it on top of my fabric to use as a guide to cut out the next one. And, uh... No! Pumpkin! Yeah, my cats were not being very helpful throughout this process. I took a strip of lace and sewed it to the hem right sides together and then I flipped it so the lace was facing downwards and then sewed it again just kind of top stitching next to that edge. I also sewed a line of stitches along the top of the flounce to use as gathering stitches later. Here is the lace I picked out. I thought the natural cotton was a little bit too dark for the almost white fabric so I bleached it to be a little bit lighter. I started to pin the lace over the seam allowance and immediately decided that, that was a poor idea and decided to baste it instead. Then I sewed the edges of the lace down by machine, cut the fabric in the middle, pushed it to the sides and sewed again, just on the outside of the first seam. Here I'm trimming away the excess fabric. Then I'm taking this thin strip of lace and sewing it right sides together onto the bottom edge of the drawers. Turning the lace to the outside and sewing again. Then I found the center of my flounce and lined it up with the center of my drawers and pinned it down. Then I pinned the edges and halfway in between the two. I used the line of stitching I sewed previously to gather the flounce to fit. Here I'm sewing the flounce to the lace, pressing the seam allowance to the flounce side. Then I sewed the inseam with a French seam. Then I sewed the two sides of the drawers together at the center front, and I've seen this uh, in a few different extant garments. I was thinking about just having uh, the two front edges overlap, but I thought it would be better to actually sew them together. some silk thread. I didn't have any silk buttonhole twists, so I just used uh, some thin silk sewing thread doubled over and I made a little bar tack right where that stitching ended to reinforce that point. Then I cut out a waistband. This waistband is about two and a quarter inches by my waist measurement plus like three inches uh, 
One edge was on the salvage, which was nice because I didn't have to finish that edge. Historically, waistbands were done differently than modern waistbands. Uh, they had the skirt finished separately and the waistband finished separately, and then they would kind of whip stitch the two together, and this prevents the bulk from the skirt being in the waistband. Uh, I decided to do a modern waistband because there wasn't very much bulk, there wasn't any gathering or pleating, I just had like my four little darts, uh, so I thought it would be okay. I'm not sure if this would have been done historically or if they still would have finished it um, in the same way as skirts. I don't know. If you do know, feel free to leave it in the comments below. So to do my waistband, I pressed uh, the edge, that, the long edge that wasn't on the salvage, under uh, about half an inch, and I also pressed the ends under. I cut out a small square of fabric to put uh, inside of the waistband at one end where I was going to add a buttonhole later just to have a little bit more reinforcement because this fabric is very uh, lightweight and flimsy so I thought having at least another two layers of it would help stabilize that buttonhole. Then I laid my waistband on my garment right sides together and sewed along the waistline and then I pressed the seam allowance up towards the waistband uh, and then pressed the waistband back over it and finished that edge by hand. Then I cut a buttonhole, and always make sure your button fits through your buttonhole. Then I did the buttonhole with a buttonhole stitch in the same not buttonhole twist silk thread. Then I sewed on the button and threaded the same sage green ribbon through the insertion lace between the flounce and the top part of the drawers. And that was it! I'm really happy with the way these turned out. I think they're super cute and I can't wait to wear them more. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to share, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Okay, bye! You are on my chemise, you little cat. It is much too large for you. I could make you one and it would be very small. And you might not wear it because you don't really wear clothes. Excuse me. Uh, I don't know what she's doing. I love you. Look at this little cat. She's so cute. You see? That's that's my lens. Yeah, that's that's the furry thing on top of my lens.